I would love it if Three Ghosts traumatized Jeff Bezos into, you know, giving and divvying up his wealth. That would be great. We have a podcast. We're talking about it. We're talking about scary stuff. It's a new year. Yeah. And we're in our second episode of the series. So welcome. Yeah. If you didn't catch Blood Quantum, make sure you do. Uh, We are moving to a different culture to talk about it (laughs) because this is our For the Culture series where we're going back to our roots of, you know, talking about facts Films, films and feelings yeah uh, in the classic way that we used to so be prepared to learn something get yeah. your media analysis glasses on eh? but um i'm not even wearing my glasses where have i put them yeah we're gonna be talking about uh la llorona not that la llorona not the curse of la llorona not which the is one a part from 2017 the... <laughs> just learned it's good yeah the one that is a part of the 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 um Lorraine and Ed Warren uh yes, all of them. yes, yes. it's a part of that and it was it, called the curse of well, yeah this is not this Lyra. is just regular La Llorona 2019 yeah and it, it is immediately just like wow look what happens when you let people tell the stories whoever writes to those stories and yeah, are from that culture it's crazy. and look how much better it is and more intentional so and better. different than you could ever imagine it's not just spooky uh white lady with her kids getting traumatized yeah. by you know an unspecified hispanic woman there wasn't um, any white savior times so it was it was significantly better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. For a lot of reasons. So uh, the La Llorona we're going to talk about is on Shudder. Um, so you can watch it there. It is recent, 2019. 19. And uh, is more deliberate, <laughs> but just significantly better. Um, but the why it's in our For the Culture series isn't just because it's like, you know, Guatemalan people telling Guatemalan stories. It's a very specific story that happens to be very political um, and yeah. is it's based real. in reality. <laughs> and, like, you know, what we would wish is that, you know, all of the, you know, terrorists of organizations of government were traumatized by our folklore villains, um, if only, you know, like, yeah, we just came out of the holiday season. I would love it if Three Ghosts traumatized Jeff Bezos into, you know, giving and divvying up his wealth. That would be great. He was um, 100% Scrooge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 100%. And so, like, the same thing goes for, you know, the, the governments that be who have all this power and aren't, you know, you know, doing anything with it so i for one would love if all of our folklore villains instead of like attacking or dragging kids into water instead turn their eyes to the true villains of society which are like you know men with power um (laughs) and you know did that so it is uh steeped in reality so we will i'll I'll pass the the torch or the mic over to to cat for cat's history education corner yeah, we're going to dip another toe. We're going to be doing it. So this is your daily reminder for me that we know nothing. You have so much to learn. You thought you knew stuff, you're wrong. Because the world is filled with so much stuff that, one, has intentionally not been taught to us. Or two, like, if you're not looking for it, you might not necessarily know. So if you don't remember how messed up humanity is, I hope this series will remind you that history, the only thing we can count on it to be is horrific. So... <laughs> Our media does a fantastic job of educating people uh, about these horrors and giving us new questions and things to learn about. Uh, So in this week's mini history corner, we're going to briefly unpack the guilty verdict of Guatemala's former dictator, Jose Efrain Rios Mont, during his genocide trial in Guatemala City, uh, Friday, May 10th, 2013. Which is way too soon. Like that was too recent. 
It was very, yeah, very recent. I would argue, like, uh, I feel like people always think of genocide, at least like in America, think of genocide as things that were a long time ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah, happened very, luxury. very recently. Yeah. Um, so in the film that we watched, La Llorona, uh, we got a glimpse into this history. And one thing that's really beautiful about the film, similar to how we got with Blood Quantum, is like it's it's talking about something that is real in this like fictional version of this world. So, you know... I will say in 2013 when I was 20, no idea that this was happening. Um, Not a clue. I, until I watched this film, I had no idea that this happened. I mean, I'd heard of genocide happening in the world, but I did not know that as recent as 2013, this took place, mm-hmm. um, specifically in Guatemala. And I took from an article, The Nation, titled Guatemala's Genocide on Trial. And it's basically just a news story talking about the fact that this happened. Mm. Um, And, you know, because it's so recent, we don't have so much of like, I guess like when we're thinking of history, this is something that happened recent enough where there is historical information about it, but it's still something that was recent enough that it's not necessarily like in our history books as of yet. Yeah, still developing. Um, Yeah. So... In this trial of Rios Mont, uh, he was 86 at the time. The yes. article outlines it as stemming from his 17 month rule in eight, uh, 1982 to 1983 after he grabbed power in a coup and then unleashed a bloody counterinsurgency against guerrilla uprising and its alleged civilian supporters in rural highlands. So it engulfed a lot of the country. The case follow focus specifically on the human rights crimes committed by Rio Smot's army and the Xeal region of the department of Quiche, where 1,771 indigenous Mayans were killed and some 29,000 displaced in a scorched earth strategy designed to destroy the Xeal communities once and for all. I apologize if I'm saying that incorrectly, uh, but hopefully I'm not. Essentially, the trial is outlining the, like, brutality that took place during this. And in the film, you get, like, a glimpse of this trial. And it seems like it's pretty accurate um, in its depiction because you have this man who is older. He's not in great health. But he definitely committed these crimes. And you're having, like, people who were victim to these crimes testifying. uh, And you get this guilty verdict that is overturned essentially which Mm -hmm. is actually what happened in real life um so the plan victoria 82 was issued internally by rios mont in june 1982 that called for the annihilation not only of armed guerrillas but of mayan people who aided with food shelter and information Um, In the context of the regime's extreme anti-communist ideology, the Mayan population was identified as an internal enemy and therefore a legitimate target for military attack. Uh, The judge of the case, Barrios, described the consequences of that strategy when she read the verdict. The exiles were subjected to massacre and forced disappearance, systemic rape, the killing of children, women, and elderly, the burning of their homes, the slaughter of their animals, the destruction of their crops, massive displacement, and the death by hunger, sickness, bombings when they sought refuge in the mountains. So just really awful things happened. And by the time that they reached the verdict uh, was basically a rejection, which is very interesting that the government itself was rejecting the actions of former leaders, which I don't know if we always see that. Mm -hmm. I feel like, Gabe, when we were watching it, you were mentioning, like, it's really interesting that they're putting a former leader on trial. Yeah. Because... Well, it's just interesting that this government is putting the government on trial. Mm -hmm. Like, that a government is so... Like, it was peculiar because I was like, a government that's, you know, corrupt enough to have genocide in it, but simultaneously seeking justice. Like it didn't, mm-hmm. that didn't equal out to me. And which makes sense because ultimately it was overruled. So it, or like, you know, they took it back. But I was like, that's so 
interesting <laughs> like that you're mm-hmm. you know you took two steps forward but you are someone who was like already started way back there yeah and i mean it's it's kind of like a contrast to what we see in america uh in that like we kind of try to nationalize like nationalism we mm-hmm. try to like glorify our past here yeah um and the atrocities we could it's not so much uh, it's like we don't want to talk about it like you saw how trump reacted to like race sensitivity training mm-hmm. um so essentially like it's like trying to like just like pretend everything was glorious before where it's it's more beneficial for healing if you acknowledge the awful that has happened and like take this st- and acknowledge and get justice for the people who it's happened to and then like the country itself can start to heal yeah. so we start we that's i guess how the trial was kind of seen initially um and the verdict was a rejection of the army's extreme cruelty so the brutal brutalization of these people it was an acknowledgement that the systemic destruction of mayan communities and the most radical expression possible of racism social exclusion and abuse that guatemala's indigenous people had endured for hundreds of years um and was used as a way to restore like a measure of dignity to the victims and survivors by recognizing the totality of their historical experience instead of Simply like the death, pain, and loss that each person suffered uh, is what the article kind of outlines. One thing that I read that really like bummed me out but did not surprise me um, <laughs> is that the U.S. actually backed Rios Mont in his time. And I believe it was Reagan who called him – Reagan famously considered the dictator to be a totally – dedicated to democracy and called him a man of great personal integrity and commitment. Disgusting. And there, so it's, I don't know why secret wars existed, but they did um, with the United States and it benefited the United States to back Guatemala in their war with, uh, like the United States' secret war, according to this article, with, uh, I believe, Nicaragua. Hmm. So it was totally politically motivated. They actually provided lots of money and aid, the United States, to Rios Mont and basically, like, backed him in his awfulness that he did um and obviously he was not the only one who did awful there were other generals and we get to see that a little bit in the film that Mm -hmm. like once he is taken spoilers out um (laughs) that essentially there are others who also have to atone uh who have to pay and like i guess find this supernatural justice um but yeah, uh, I obviously don't know everything about this. This is my first time learning about it. So I totally encourage our viewers to learn more themselves, find resources that give you information about this, because I honestly had no idea that, I mean, it was in the 80s, I believe, mm-hmm. that this took place. So obviously it was not as recent as 2013, but I guess it's just like encouraging people to question. It took a long time for him to like he was just walking around free 2013 so like and it's i guess like finding justice for people who yeah they're old now but it doesn't mean they didn't do those things like it's like when you like come after people who are committed a crime in like the 20s and they're like we're not 20s that's like way too early (laughs) But you got like the 40s and they're old as heck now. Yeah. Um, it's like they still committed that awfulness, I guess. Yeah. Well, it's like the Golden State Killer where uh, he got – he finally got found out uh, thanks to Michelle uh-huh. McNamara. Um, and like he was very old, but he committed those crimes when he was a young police officer. Like <laughs> and yeah. like got away with it for the majority of his life until the end and was like super old on trial. Yeah. I think it's like it it feels a little too little too late and it's hard to Yeah. Cuz like I get what they're saying where it's like the trial is there to kind of like mend wounds. Cuz like by that time he is older. He's already dying. They're not really yeah. like he's not going to go to jail. Like he's not going to prison. And it really was like an act 
more or less. Like, it's more to, like, give people something to feel like there's justice. Um, yeah. But it really is, like, just that. It's just a spectacle. Yeah. Because, like, it's it's too little too late. Like, those people are already dead. That stuff has already happened to them. Um, and it, it feels, you know, kind of disingenuous. But, at, like, it's also nice that something happened <laughs> you know like that yeah, yeah. I, I think like looking at, at it for what it was and calling it out like I guess like the government admitting that you know something really awful took place under their rule instead of like trying to I guess sugarcoat it mm -hmm. is a powerful thing like America um, does yeah <laughs> history it's just, it was nothing but great make it a great again because <laughs> um, it's been great this whole time and then you ask like oh it's like Oh, except for that. Th it's like if there's an except for, yeah, it, wasn't it wasn't great, yeah. man. <laughs> there's, and there's um, a lot of except for. Here we are. <laughs> uh, but yeah, obviously that is not the whole story. There's obviously a lot more to that story. And I recommend people, you know, doing their own research and learning about it. After watching the film, I think it naturally lends like being curious uh, about history that like I had no idea about. Yeah. So and like, I encourage people to do the same. There's like this, so there's that part of the story, and then there's La Llorona part of the story, right? So it's yeah. like this merging of, of things, because La Llorona is usually like the, when we talked about this, when we covered the curse of La Llorona in our Latinx representation and horror series with Sergio Galliano, and we were really yeah. disappointed in, in that. But we talked about, you know, hearing of, of the tale of La Llorona, and because it was, you know, it's this woman who was like it, it kind of takes on different things it's it's similar to yeah. the ure in in j horror where it was like you know it's it's a woman who is wronged or has wronged and it's like she drowns her kids because her husband cheated on her and now she's like cursed to keep drowning kids uh or yeah she lost her kids because of something and she's cursed to drown other like because she's trying to save the kids and it ends up being that she drowns them but it's always like it's this woman who is has been wronged in some way yeah and either that causes her to do this act or she's like you know like either she's, it causes her to do an evil act of like murder or it's like that she's reacting to murder you know yeah. and so now she's like terrorizing you but a lot of the time the what she was terrorizing is like children like they're yeah. the ones who are the victims like for forever it's just like there's reciprocation of the violence that was done to her which is kind of like when you think of like the grudge right it's just that like yeah when immense pain it occurs in a place it doesn't leave like it's mm -hmm. stuck there and so then it just keeps going and acting out like those same pains and horrors and um just doing that over and over again which is what she's doing which i think for this film it's interesting because it's not that right like we're yeah, finally it's a very seeing a unique it. version yeah like we're seeing a a like a, like she is finally focused on the right villain like the right enemy mm -hmm. like she's not targeting other victims she is targeting the actual monsters um the real monsters like you know and, and yeah. doing that and i think there's also this other level that we'll talk about in the film section of the other characters that are in it too because you know there's not just like one side to the story there's not just one element that we explore um but mm -hmm. i figure you know for the facts section <laughs> to kind of dabble in there just throw a little crash course on what la llorona is um so that you can do it but i mean usually it's just a caution tale for children to listen to their parents um yeah because that's what it is or it's just like you know the tale of you know that it's hard <laughs> being a woman because mm -hmm. <laughs> like oh, it sucks sometimes yeah. and it's dangerous and you're just a mom and it's sad uh and so i think it's it's an interesting take to use for sure and recraft this folklore into a political statement that would hopefully you know is is similar to that the, the real life trial is a cathartic experience like we can live mm -hmm. out justice in some way yeah and i mean if you think about so in the film where we have who she's also like kind of giving these like dreams to the wife and like you have like these interactions with the other characters and if you think of like 
people who do monstrous things, who do horrible things in horrific things in history, they have people who protect them. Mm-hmm. Um, so or make excuses for them. For sure. Exactly. Um, so I think it was really, I remember at the time I was like, why are they coming for the wife and the family? It's like, they were not the ones who did it, but in a way it, they did not do it themselves, but they had been protecting yeah. this man. They're not they had innocent. been justifying his actions um, with themselves or to others. And I think not that it makes them necessarily as guilty, but they need their perspective change. They need to recognize him for his awfulness and not protect him yeah. from justice for these people who have suffered. So yeah. I thought that was like really cool how they did that. It was like powerful to like have them turn on him, I guess, like to like get in their head like they realized how awful he was. Mm-hmm. And I guess I mean, you could argue it's self-preservation, but I would also say like, it was cool to like have his gross support system recognize him for how awful he was. Um, and like kind of damn him like La Llorona was trying to do. So I yeah. thought that was cool. And like, um, I mean, you mentioned it when we were watching it, that it, it reminded you of like how people feel about Melania. And Trump. Yeah. it's like they like she is not exempt. She is there. She's also there. She's witnessing it. She's a part of it. She is not excluded from like the horrors that that family commits because yeah. she's right there. And in she's there. choosing to embrace the rose colored version mm-hmm. of what's being fed to her. She's not questioning it. Yeah. And that's a problem. Yeah. It's like you, it allows you have the behavior right to, to continue. <laughs> yeah. Like you have an obligation to, you know, question that and and try to confront it that's what it would mean to be like not innocent but like to be the like the hero of that story right it's like to not be complacent with it you have to actively go against it like like we've said before like pacificity like not speaking out is just as bad as like doing the action (laughs) like you're just as guilty because you're continuing to let that happen um so it makes you just as guilty and i think that's an interesting part of this um film which we can get into yeah so we watch stuff we're doing it we watch some things we're talking about la irona um and i'm gonna tell you about what it's about please do (laughs) an aging paranoid War criminal protected by his faithful wife faces death while being haunted by the ghost of his past. Directed by Jairo Bustamante, starring Maria Mercedes Corroy. Or nice. Mariah? Maria? Maria. I, don't know. I think it's Maria. Yeah. Dope. Maria Mercedes Corroy. Caroy. Nice. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, like we mentioned, uh, this isn't your classic tale. This is not the Curse yeah. of La Llorona. This is La Llorona. Uh, it's about Guatemala and about this war criminal dictator who committed genocide and yeah. uh, was the result it resulted in thousands or thousand seven hundred and seventy one deaths. Um, yeah. And I mean, that's what's reported, <laughs> you know, like we don't even know what other things could have happened. Um, yeah. And that's what I, as soon as like, cause so um, we're like in the beginning, you're confronted with a trial and uh-huh. there are these women who are wearing these really elaborate like shawls over their face. Um, they're really beautiful shawls. Um but it's there to hide their identities uh, because they are yeah. witnesses and they are, you know, speaking on the atrocities that happened to them and their people. Um, and it's uh, in, you know, Kat's research for the actual trial, it seems like that's pretty accurate as to what occurred at the trial. So there's people who were yeah. witnesses and spoke on it. And there was just this group of women who were speaking on the things that had happened to them. And you have this old man who is on trial. And again, he's older and not in good health. And it's clear he is being tried for things that have happened previously um, some time ago. Because it's not like this old man is going out shooting people. Murdering people. Um, Although he is like, he is already on edge because of the trial. Like we first see him and he's walking around the house because he hears a woman crying. And... He's got his guns because he has a whole gun stash like dictators do. Um, 
<laughs> and I found it interesting. I don't know if you, Kat, I didn't hear the crying in the beginning. Or the second I time. Did, I actually, I did hear it. I What I thought was just really weird is like, why is the reaction to crying woman to I'm grab a gun yeah. yeah i was just like what i guess like maybe because if la Llorona is like such a known yeah tale that like the hearing of a crying woman if you have a guilty conscience already would indicate that like maybe that's what's happening uh yeah I, yeah i found it very strange that the reaction to crying lady is get a gun because tears equal you're going to die. Yeah. Um, I think it I think it was that he was he thought it was La Llorona. Because okay. even so, cuz he says so, he says like the weeping woman <clears throat> and the the family and the the people who work there are like that's just a tale. Like that's not real. Like they yeah. try to tell him cuz they think he's like kind of losing it. He's older. Yeah, they he's think it's like dementia, dementia and yeah, so they're like what's going on? I didn't hear her. I really didn't. And I just thought, I was like, that's cool. Cause like, it's really just in his head, but no. Um, yeah. what I will say is like cinematically, I was like infatuated with this film. I think j does a, a lot of really great things where there's yeah. a good use of like thirds in this film, like in a screen uh-huh. where Some really cool shots. there are th- like things happening in each part of this screen in like, in this like small little square, right? Like you, there's like a scene where, um, and if I can find the screen cap of it, I'll try to put it there, but I doubt it. I'll just explain it to you. But there's a part where he <laughs> had like, he gets his gun and he walks to the bathroom. And on the left side of the screen is like the his closet door. And on the closet door is his suit, which he's going to uh-huh. wear to the trial tomorrow. And it's like, you know, a very fancy suit. And the middle is just darkness. And then to the right is... It's the light is on. He is in the bathroom and he's sitting there and he's in his pajamas and he's holding the gun and he's this this distraught, broken man just yeah. sitting there. And it's like this contrast of like, you know, his the the suit that he wears and the the show that he puts on, this darkness that's always looming there and like on the edge of his sanity, and then him who's just in the light and broken. And it was just like yeah. Whoa! This is how we start. <laughs> like, this is where we yeah. where we start at a ten, right? And throughout the the film, when he is kind of skulking around the house, there's always this like suffocating like vignette of darkness like around the edges, because like he uh-huh. never one he never puts on the lights because he wants to catch her, right? And he has his yeah. gun. He's like immediately to shoot and stuff, um, <laughs> which is not the way that you handle things. But clearly, he's not, you know, a reasonable yeah. man, uh, and. <laughs> He, like, skulks, and there's always this, like, depth to the darkness. And I think it's interesting because yeah. it doesn't rely on, like, classic jump scares. Like, there are plenty of opportunities where you could just, like, open a cabinet, you close a the cabinet, there's La Llorona, right? Like, because that's what, like, yeah. The Curse of La Llorona was just a really bad horror movie where it was just, like, ah, spooky dead woman chasing after the kid. Um, where yeah. this was, like, you're just uncomfortable, and the horrors were really the reality were the flashbacks and looking and seeing like, oh, he did some really awful things and like seeing that and seeing like the protesters outside demanding justice, um, you know, calling out, uh, having names of the people who are missing um, Uh in the pictures of them, like, have you seen me? And I think that's so, so very interesting. And there's like a hint of ghosts besides La Llorona because there's like a scene where Alma who is uh, a woman who is native she's darker skin she's got the long black hair that's like really beautiful like the daughter even like the she says like oh can I grow up my hair like that and it's like this like she clearly thinks Alma's beautiful and there's like this like the mom kind of like dismisses it because her and her family are the light skins like clearly come from like the colonized folks um and alma is the mayan like she's like the you know native people who are darker and so there's a lot of colorism that comes into this um yeah and that's where like that's why the genocide happened to these people um who aren't what they presume to be like the the culture that they deemed worth saving um and protecting and so like she's like as a young person 
sees this woman and is like, that's beautiful. <laughs> like, this is a beautiful person. And she's so pure, like not really understanding what it was. And from the start, we were like, all right, she needs to be protected. Like she's still yeah. young enough that she could be saved. Whereas the, the, the guy's daughter and his wife were already skewed. Um, there's many conversations with them that we talked about uh, in the facts section where it's like, they're making excuses for him yeah. or they're believing the narratives that he told them. Right. So like, they'll because be- it benefits them. Yeah. Yeah. And because it's like the alternative is acknowledging that your husband or your father is that evil. And that's yeah. a really big thing to grapple with. Right. And it's something that like you would much rather believe whatever else excuse he gives you than to believe that he's evil. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, like the mom says, like, oh, women, you know, especially the the darker skinned women always throwing themselves at him. You yeah. know, like and, and, and later we find that, like, he's been promiscuous. He has been infidelous um, by the fact that he might have a kid who is uh, or a, she's a grown woman now, but that he yeah. had a child with um, one of the native women. And it was like. That he always, like, she was like, I thought I was old enough now that I don't have to worry about that. (laughs) And clearly he's still doing stuff. Um, Yeah. And so she, in the beginning, it seems like, you know, she's saying that and it sounds like she's on his side. But as the story progresses, it really seems like she's been dealing with a lot. And she's been trying to, you know, make sense of it or to file it away. Or believe whatever it is that he tells her because it's better than the truth, um, but still yeah. knowing the truth. And so still being really guilty. Like in the beginning, they're both pretty guilty. And she, the yeah. daughter, already is starting to like be suspicious, right? Yeah, she's questioning things. She's like asking like, "Did do you think it's true? Like, is yeah. there a chance uh, that he's done what they're saying he's done? Because mm-hmm. um, in this like world she would have been still a child when that was all Mm -hmm. taking place so she's like is that actually what happened um yeah because you know when you're a kid you have like a skewed version of your surroundings um but the mom like quickly dismisses her and is like no how could you even say that like you should be on our side and like kind of just like puts any kind of questioning out the window. Mm-hmm. Well, it's also, uh, she is also suspicious because her <laughs> daughter's dad is missing. And she never okay. really quite says, like, he left us. Like, it's 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 a big question mark of what happened to him. And later when she, yeah. like, confronts, like, the security guard they have, it's pretty much implied that the dad got rid of him. And she even confronts him. She says, like, why didn't you like him? And he says, uh, don't get your stories crossed. He didn't like Like you. you Yeah. And that was like, you know, and then he, you know, he says, like, he won't say I love you or or she won't say I love you back to him. And, like, clearly there's this this distance between them now where she is starting to put it together because she was blissfully like purposely avoiding the truth and like the whole time this her daughter is like where's dad who where happened to him and she won't answer and so she has this similar kind of pain towards her grandfather that alma has about her kids that are dead and so like with the other ghosts that are in there when alma is hanging out with the girl there's always like (laughs) a lot of creepy la yorona stuff where she's like teaching her how to hold her breath and I was like oh my god she's gonna drown everyone and uh, and then the girl's the only <laughs> one who's gonna survive and um they're looking out the window and there's the missing posters and yeah. they're saying to each other I think that's him and so it's like a picture of a guy and in the crowd of protesters that guy is there because yeah the ghosts are there they're haunting them already and it's more than just La Llorona it's the whole and we see them later it's all of them um yeah and there's like there's another interesting element where uh, the the wife is plagued with dreams where she is Alma and she is yeah. living her trauma and it's it's affecting her to the point where you know she is the one who 
commits the justice at the end uh, yeah. that I felt was sad. I would rather him rot in prison, but um, yeah. I feel like death is easy. <laughs> For, like he was suffering pretty hard and I think he could kept doing that uh, in yeah. jail. But like, they're kind of like, even though he's not in prison, they're trapped in their house. And this is made before, you know, COVID where we're all stuck in our yeah. house. That's a horror in itself when you can't yeah. leave. Cause they can't, like, she keeps saying like, well, what, like, do we need to go to the doctor? And it's like, no, they gotta come here. Like you can't leave, it's dangerous. Yeah. And so they're pr imprisoned in there. Um, and I just think it was really interesting, like the way that she's just subtly haunting. Like, and how they yeah. all are reacting to the situation in this unique and honest way, right? Like, that his reaction is to grab a gun and shoot the water, not knowing that yeah. his granddaughter's in there, right? Or um, that the wife is, like, being, is ashamed. And there's some vulnerable moments, you know, where she has an accident and the daughter doesn't want to, like, the daughter pretty much is just like, you know, it happens to everyone and, like, we won't talk about it because it's embarrassing. Like, especially at your age and, like, has the stuff ready. And, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And that the mom is, like, has that pride to yeah. not talk about it. And I think that's what was interesting to me was, like, the whole time she's, like, being confronted with this very vulnerable story that she is living through with these children that are very clearly not hers because they're darker and she's living in the mountains. Um, and like, we're slowly learning, like Alma isn't who she said she was or that she might not be there. <laughs> like, she might not be real and yeah. all that. Um, <clears throat> but their reactions all like, I thought it was a, a unique way to torment each one of them. Yeah. And there was, a, I think the way it was filmed really added to it, like you were saying, with the use of, I guess, thirds. Mm -hmm. uh, I, there was also, like, the, the way that, like, suspense was built. So, like, it started off at the beginning where, like, there was, like, very subtle zooming in. But the one scene that I still, like, viscerally remember is when the the one daughter goes to sleep, who uh, is the maid of the house. Mm -hmm. um, she goes to sleep and... It's like very slowly zooming in to like oh, right yeah. behind her as, as she's sleeping. And then you like very slowly and you're like trying, you're like, what's what's going to be there? And you're like looking and you're like extra paying attention. And then Alma like like just like hangs down upside down with like her hair going down and yeah. just like looking at the camera. And it was like really jarring. And there were like other moments where it's like the angles and like the way suspense was built was done really beautifully there's um uh a review in the la times uh which we have talked about a few times uh it's called la llorona smartly reimagines a folk legend as a political horror story and one of the quotes from that says La Llorona avoids the tropes of horror, the screechy violins and bumping furniture. Instead, the smart and elegant film feels like a languid bit of cinematic magical realism where strange things happen, and the real horror lies not in the supernatural, but in the savage acts of men. Which is, yeah. is well, one, very true. Um, but because that, that's really it. It doesn't have those. Like You feel uncomfortable and you're stressed and you're like, what's going to happen? Yeah. Um, but you're really like, you're like, what's going to happen with the people? Like, the people are going to do something, not yeah. Alma. Like, I mean, I did think she was going to, like, drown the kid, but she didn't. Um, <laughs> yeah. Or that she was going to drown everyone. She didn't. And that's what yeah. I think is really even better about it is that she torments them to then do the work for her. Like, in the yeah. the classic tale of La Llorona, she's drowning kids. And this, she doesn't. She doesn't drown anyone. She just shows yeah. you the truth and walks you through the trauma and the terror so that you exact the revenge for her. Like, you are the instrument of the revenge. And what is, yeah. like, what could be worse than, you know, like, either this haunting ghost drowns you or your wife kills you? What is worse, yeah. you know? Um, and I thought that was super interesting and such a unique take and i really appreciated sure. it um there's another uh article i found on the verge which we also use quite a lot called la llorona is not the ghost story you're expecting should people <laughs> say that a lot uh and it's here's the quote from that it says um 
Sorry. <laughs> Enrique is an arrogant patriarch with few redeeming qualities. Although it takes time to understand everything he's done, his wife and daughter are more complicated. While the film jabs at their condescension, cruelty toward other women, and casual racism, their most horrible beliefs are driven by love. Because loving the monstrous, abusive Enrique means ignoring or justifying what he's done. And that requires hardening themselves into something cruel and vicious, calling his victims liars, or pretending that they don't exist. Because I think, yeah. at the end of the day, the, the real horror was um, that he had people reasoning for him. Yeah. And so to turn, like, you know, Alma slash La Llorona's real terror was turning them against him. Because that's all he had at yeah. the end of the day um, was people who were believing him d despite the the alarming evidence. Um, I think one of the quotes that really stuck with me was in the trial where the woman removes the veil. And she says, yeah. like, I'm not ashamed of, like, to tell you what happened to me. And so I hope you will not be ashamed to do the justice for what happened to me. Right. Like it was essentially yeah. like I uh, horrible things happen to me. I have to accept that. And you also have to accept that, which is like the whole that was the whole trial <laughs> was that was like to be yeah. like, just acknowledge that it happened, that it was wrong and that someone needs to be punished for it. And so yeah. hopefully like people watch this film, learn that something happened in 2013 that we weren't paying attention to, that things were happening in the 80s that we weren't paying attention to. And that things are probably happening right now that we're not paying attention to. And that, yeah. you know, we can look to hopefully better punish uh, the people who are at fault in doing those awful things. Yeah. And, and ultimately, like, not repeat the same historical atrocities. Like, if we have a history that is so horrific and we don't look at it, it, there's no stopping it from happening again. Mm -hmm. Like the best thing everyone can do is learn about the horrible things that have happened and not just like feel sad about it. Cause that's useless. Yeah. It's nothing productive. <laughs> you know, like being like, Oh, it's a <laughs> shame Ooh. and guilt are like, they're useless emotions. Uh, and at least they're not productive, you know, and what we need to do is look at these things and learn about them and know what caused it so that if we notice those things happening again, that we're able to prevent it from happening. Yeah. Instead of just being like, it's easier if we don't. Yeah. For you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy for anyone else. Well, it's like um, we need to get escape like our little bubbles um, yeah. of like ignorance in our own little worlds and realize that there's a bigger world out there and that things are happening and just confront them. Like we have to confront them. We have to look at them in the eye and acknowledge that they exist so that we can then move on and try to do something different. Yeah. And, like, if they're in your own family, like, don't let them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I I, I get it's hard, but, you know, everyone has that uncle that, you, you know, like, don't. The uncle isn't a part of your family anymore. If yeah. he's, like, you can't, your kid can't wear shorts around them or something. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, there are people in our own families that have very problematic views on things. And it is, like, if we're related to them, we can't just pretend that doesn't exist. Like, mm -hmm. We have to call them out on those thoughts and like problematic existence. Like it doesn't make you a bad person unless you're not calling them out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like there's like a, I believe a book by Dennis Rader's daughter. He's the BTK killer. Okay. Um, and like, he didn't get found till much later cause he wanted to. Um, cause he would like, <laughs> he would mail, things to the police and he like mailed a cd and was like don't or dvd and was like don't trace this you promise you won't trace it and they're like yeah and then he like mailed it to them and they immediately traced it <laughs> stupid um but his daughter uh what i'm trying to say is uh wrote about like her experiences of like confronting like the two people that her father was right like it was like her dad yeah. it was like taking her out going to the park being you know a cub scout or whatever and also murdering women and having yeah. to like reconcile with like the truth of that and to essentially like try to leave behind 
the the idea that was her dad because it, that's not true. Like he, he did awful things, so we kind of can't hold on to those things anymore. Um, they yeah. outweigh the others. Um, and there's, I mean, yeah, you, you know, just because their blood or your family doesn't mean that they should be exempt. You have to hold it. Like if yeah. anything, you're you really, really have to hold them accountable. Yeah. And and even if you're thinking on like a friend's standpoint, where if like you have people in the public eye who are accused of like assaulting a woman and like other women are like, well, he, he wouldn't have done like, there's no way, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like Like he never did it. He never did that. Yeah. And it's like, okay. All right. Lana Dunham. (laughs) That doesn't mean that it didn't happen. And like that shouldn't be your gauge. So yeah, like also like calling out people who you know, mm-hmm. like who are your friends. Holding them accountable. And just because yeah. they haven't done that to you doesn't mean they aren't capable of it. Um and I guess yeah, just like having everyone kind of accept that they cannot possibly know the inner workings of other people's brains and hearts and accepting that and mm-hmm. doing better. <laughs> yeah. I think this film does a really good job of showing the complexities of people and that there's all these layers and that, you know, people react in those ways. I think that the fact that it's really heavily focused on women and there's just the one, there's two men in this film. There's the the Enrique and then there's a guard and neither one of them is trustworthy and safe, right? Like everyone else is these women who are each affected in some way by this man yeah. um, and kind of coping and dealing with like what happened and, and yeah. how it's going to forever change who they are. Um, and then later, like, yeah, it was like, it's, it takes more than one person to do that. Right. Like it takes more than yeah. one person to do a coup and it takes more than one person to commit genocide. <laughs> and so, yes. you know, the ending promises that she doesn't stop. She's not going to stop until everyone who is responsible is dead or at least uh traumatized yeah which is nice it's pleasant yeah i enjoy that (laughs) i think it's yeah good that it wasn't just him because it's like he's not the only one who did this Mm -hmm. so and again that it wasn't just like supernatural murder right it was like yeah so you know uh he suffered um all right so ratings because we're back we're doing our thing. Feelings yep. section. What are we feeling? Um, How do we feel so about it? If you don't like it, it's The Curse of La Llorona, which was the bad film. Uh, yes. And if you do like it, it's La Llorona, which is this Which one. was a good one. <laughs> 2019. Uh, and so, um, 2000, yeah, 2019. Um, though if you look up, if you put La Llorona 2019, it comes up a Curse of La Llorona. Uh, oh no so put okay now you're on a 2020 oh okay perfect um and it works <laughs> um yeah so with the like the trial uh i will say that's tough to yeah. judge because like it sucks because it was overturned yeah and it was a real thing that happened yeah i think doing the trial itself was a La Llorona because it was nice to see an attempt. Yeah, I agree. And that's like kind of like I said, like I was like, it's I think it's insane that simultaneously there can exist a government in which this dictator can do that and a government which will even try Call it out to, yeah. you know, address the issues. And, you know, I can't I don't know, but I feel like I'm sure some people found that it was it was good to speak on those things that happened to them and to their families to have it addressed in some degree. Um, and to have like to that extent, like to kind of go through it and, you know, it was almost like Mm -hmm. a therapy in a way. For sure. Yeah. I would agree. Nice. Um, I support that. And the film is a lot you're on it because it was good. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I don't think, uh, I think if we were still talking about the curse of La Llorona, then yeah, we would have rated it poorly. But this was significantly better. Um, and one was, it was like, as all the articles that we read said, it's a very unique 
version of it compared to like what it's been made in terms of films in the past. Yeah. So I, th- as I, you know, for ghouls, like we have an affinity towards more like politically driven horror films because it is the genre that gets to say so much. Um, so yeah, it was, it was great. It was mm-hmm. a great film. I, I've loved every film we've done so far. We've had really good luck since yeah. uh, December. Yeah. So. Yeah. We've got, yeah, we've found some pretty good little films. Um, and I hope that you, listener and viewer, are enjoying them um, and are watching them alongside us and getting the same, you know, kicks out of it that we do. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think it's it's something that you're not expecting, and I think that's great. I would love to see more. Like, I'd like to see a URA mm-hmm. that's like, you know, which I mean, like, uh, what what we covered for uh, East Asian representation in <coughs> horror. Uh, what was that show? Oh, but I that, know what you're talking about. But that but one I was similar because it was a URA, but it was about like internment camps. <laughs> you yes. know, like it was like actually about yes. like, you know, that one, that's like the URA actually were, you know, doing something um, other than just being like, you messed up and now I'm a spooky lady with hair in my face. It was like, <laughs> no, yeah. there's like trauma. <laughs> there's trauma here. Yeah. And this is how we're dealing with it. Um, so like, yeah, more for that. I, w- I am so upset. I can't remember the name of that show. <laughs> yeah, definitely watch this film. Remember to give us a like, a subscribe, a listen, and a share and comment. Yes, please. Send us love. Do we it. appreciate it. Um, it's a new year. New you. Like our stuff. The you that, that supports us. Yeah. <laughs> so we can continue to do this. Um, do we. With that being said. Don't get married. Eat your kids. Eat your kids. Yeah. 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 Or, your, or you'll... Kill your husband because he committed genocide. Your kid will steal your oxygen tank to practice breathing underwater because La Llorona is nice. Yeah, classic. <laughs> Cat, like, who hasn't, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, happy New Year still. And um, yeah. we'll see you next week. Hopefully 2021 is better. Bye. Fingers crossed. Bye.